In this painting I shall start with the sky and we're going to start as I usually do at the horizon. That is in this case at the horizon just where the clouds meet colour. It's best to start with your white and gradually tint the other colours into it. If you do it the other way around you find you're adding more and more white to get it light enough and you end up with a gallon of paint. As I work upwards I shall as usual make the colours range from cooler to warmer. I start with a mixture of white and a little lemon yellow, some cerulean blue and a little bit of emerald green. Then working upwards we have more cerulean, gradually working into cobalt. In some cases I would then work into ultramarine and a little purple, but in this case it wasn't required. The clouds are then made by using the usual greys, mixing blue with browns. There are so many permutations to the greys. In this case burnt umber and ultramarine blue, but equally burnt sienna is good, and it can use the cerulean with the burnt sienna as well. Here I've also added a little bit of purple to the grey. By doing this we have wonderful control over our cool and warm greys. Sometime try mixing viridian green with alizarin crimson and white. This will also give you a beautiful grey. I'll just give it some white to just show you, just to indicate to me where... ...colours are going to be going. Working up this, these blues into each other a bit here. Just blending and I'm going to work the clouds over this shortly. Down here we've got quite a light yellowy cream again. So let's take our lemon and a bit of white. And the tiniest touch of a bit of orange into that. And we'll just Bring that colour, that rather nice golden colour again down here. Put it over there already. Down below that bird. Oh, that's a bit darker against the bird, so... Right, now we can start on the actual clouds. We want to work up the mid-tones, we want to work up the mid-tones first of these purple greys. And then we'll um, come in with the lights and work some over the top as well. Finishing up with the very lightest at the end. Not going to do the water yet, go back on that. Let's look at these greys. So I won't be using a little bit of uh, purple again there. Let's see that. I'm going to mix some of this purple in with my blue that I've already done. Give me a bit more consistency. A bit of yellow ochre into that, get a more golden colour. Let's just try that out. See, the thing is that I'm still dealing with this white canvas. And all the while I've got that there, it's rather throwing me out, but it goes very dark down here. I'll just get this fluffed up here to feed with these clouds. <coughs> Ultramarine white, a little bit of uh, burnt sienna to give me this grey. We touch of the purple, but not much. I've got to try and gradually build up these dark, fluffy clouds. And you see how, although this is the same photograph of the sky I was using, uh, it's coming out quite differently. We don't need black, we're using the blue and the browns to make our tertiary colour of the grey. I'll start to work up our slightly lighter, warmer greys. So I'm using white, a little touch of cerulean and a wee touch of elizabeth crimson now, just to start to feel these warmer greys amongst here, subtly, to gradually get this feeling of reflected warm light coming up into the sky. So with these slightly pinky tinges we're just starting to hint at that. Now with the use of a little cadmium yellow and some rose and uh, white that little touch of the, the grey, we'd already mix the purple grey. I'm starting to feel some of the pinker colours coming around the clouds. 
don't want to make it too strong. It's not a very bright pink yet. It's just subtle colours coming up through here. And right through up into the sky here as well. Just reflecting a little bit on these clouds. Hopefully you see now how the sky can be built up in layers. Working from one tone to another and warms and cools between each other as well. Got to go lighter still now with my with my pinks. So I'm taking lemon yellow and rose and white and I'm going to go lighter with those pinks still before I come to my creams. Little bits of light shining here. Gradually build up this. Although it's still against the white down here, this will make much more sense once I've uh, got rid of all that white. I'm going to add a little bit of cadmium red to the pink now to make it warmer. And you see I'm painting quite thickly, I'm painting quite in pasto now. I'm going to start putting in some cadmium orange into these. Really go for some warmth amongst them now. These are colours that I wasn't using in the last painting, so I'm taking it maybe a stage further here. Getting little bits of reflected light here and there as well on the clouds. Make the opposites in the colour circle, these reds and oranges are going to make the greens and turquoises stand out a lot more. Finally, with a lot of work to do that. Got to make a much lighter colour for the fluffiness of the clouds. Very light fluffy areas and take a smaller fill back now and mix up some quite warm but very light cream. A little bit of the chrome yellow, the white, and just see if we can now find these lovely bits of cloud in here. And I may need a bit more of the chrome yellow in that because it's quite orangey, very light down here. A lovely slab of light, sunlight coming through the cloud there down through here. As I say, we won't really see the difference in this until <clears throat> I get rid of the rest of the white. But then hopefully these colours will sing out and do what they're meant to be doing. This yellow now needs quietening down a bit down here. Little bits of sky showing through in places that are important. So for the moment, there we have it, we'll just leave that sky at that and move on to the birds. Up here we've got a heron. I want to uh, make it look as if it's in movement. I'm going to go to my smaller brush now and make that darker colour which is the Prussian blue and brown. And in this case the brown is the burnt sienna. And I've got to paint fairly carefully again because we want this beak of the bird just coming out here. Not too big. Comes into the wing. Dragging back there. Now if I take my blue and cut in around that now. His shape right. Let me try and get the feeling of this bird winging its way across the sky there. And now we want to focus in on the mallard. We'll do this main one first. Yeah. Now with the mallard um, we've got some lovely greens and warms to deal with and this lovely bright red leg. I think I have to start with the green here and I'm going to start with a very very light green first of all. This green here which uh, I shall start with as a 
yellow green, it's in other words it's like emerald mixed with um, chrome. It's going to be a very very light green indeed. So I shall take this yellow green, add a little bit more lemon yellow to it still and let's just try that colour out shall we? Yes that's not far out, it's a nice light green that I want to just give an undercoating to hit on the head here to get the the brightness shining at first and then we'll gradually, almost like a watercolour, we'll gradually work it up. Small brush at first, right down the neck with that gleaming. Now I want to go to a slightly stronger yellow green. But you see the effect of the head here is not just one colour. It's several colours put together. I need now some emerald green. It's a much bluer, more turquoisey green to shine up and through here. Right down there. That gives us the green we want. Now I've got to come on to the much darker colours. I'm going to take some viridian green, come back down the edge here. Very acidic, strong green. I'm going to go over that in a moment with a much, much darker on this Prussian. This is just to get my underpainting and find the shape and let these colours gleam through because as I was saying just now it isn't just one colour sometimes that will give the effect. You have to have one colour next to another colour to get an impressionist if you like glowing. You can just begin to see the lovely glowing colours of this mallard coming. It would be lost if we didn't do this technique. Right, darker still, now I'm going down to my Prussian and the little touch of the brown and we really start to get these blues darker colours which will make this suddenly shine and glimmer I hope. Here is how it comes. So we're now working down with this darker mixture of Prussian and I'm going to put a little bit of cobalt back into there in a moment. Gradually tone in, blend in these darker colours. Little tiny strokes just to get the feeling of these feathers gleaming in the evening light. Now, a bit of pure ultramarine, and we'll just come around here, putting in some deeper blue. That needs to be lift it just a little bit. I need to go back in with the cerulean and green there. I'm going to take some cobalt blue now. Try and work that down inside here a bit. Really do want to try and get this shininess of the duck. We've just about got that shiny feeling that we're after now. Right, let's look at the beak. So I'm going to start again with something quite light. I'm going to start with cadmium orange and a little bit of white. Just to give it some body colour. Come down from there. I'm going to have to cut into this a bit because the beak is quite looking as I would like. 
in our pure cadmium orange and see if we can find that colour in there a bit more. That's better. And then slightly more red on top of that. And while I've got that colour on my brush, let's just look at these legs here. I'm putting that lighter orange first. Paint those in completely with that. We can come back in with the red afterwards over that to get the really bright orangey red that we want to get from the feeling of the mallard's legs. Like that. Now very very carefully with the point of the brush and we can make the round point into a blade remember. I want to take some of that dark that we made earlier with the deep blue deep blue and a little touch of brown. Make the brush into a blade and very very carefully we have to come in underneath this bird's beak here to give the dark bit there and the nostril just up here. Now I need to come back to the sky just a bit because that needs cutting into a beak just a bit up here now. There's just a little layer of white left there which we don't want. Come to the, uh, the wing. To light brown there first. So let's take some of our burnt sienna, a little touch of burnt umber, and a tad of the white, and just give it a wash first. As we can use oil paints a bit like watercolours as well. I'll give it a thin coat just to get rid of the white canvas, which is not very nice, as I was saying, can't really work with that. Find the feather structure. I'll come back in with the dark over that in a minute, almost white at the edge. We'll bring that out in a moment by using some dark against it. And then just there it is in fact white. I was near down it in this picture. But again you won't really see that until I put the darks in around it. And while I've got white on my brush, let's uh, put this white collar which we all know so well with the, with the mallard here. Put your other lights in later. Let's go back to the darks. And we need a deeper brown, a feather structure here at the wing edges. So I'm using, I'm using burnt umber with a little touch of crushed minute. So we've got the feathers splaying out there as the bird hurtles up into the air. starts to appear. And gradually now building up to the very final little touches of white and fluff going in just to finish off these white feathers. And laying them over the top means that I can just be a little bit sharper and uh, thicker with my, with my paint to give that feather effect. Hopefully that's what we've got. I hope that you agree. 
we've got the movement there. So that's that mallard done. Now we'll move to the which two that are taking off. Now these two that are flying off. The photograph is rather distant. I've tried to work from all my own photographs and uh, these two were taking off quite a way away. But they're rather nice composition so let's see what we can do with them. First of all I want to use quite a light colour. So I'm going to use my cream with a, a little, little more white into it just to make the whole bird first of all. And again I'm going to get this feeling of movement on the camera. It's a bit blurry because of the movement at that speed and that camera shutter speed. Well I've got the colour on my brush then I need to do similar on the other bird. And I can start working into this with the, the darker colours again. And down there for the beak. We're using blue rather than green at the moment. Finally, if it's a blue and darker colour coming down the wing. Go to a slightly deeper blue with a mixture of the ultramarine and a little bit of Prussian just coming down into the tail there. This one's wings. So we're using that umber now and that's the Balsiana to be slightly more stronger in the brown, a bit richer. You can see the effect it's having now. Now a little bit of the orange and cadmium red. We'll just see if we can find these duck's legs a bit here. in the bird itself, parts of it just there. Just a few marks to give the impression of these colours. Right, so now we come down to the uh, water. We've done this bit now, it's this bit to do. We'll put that in afterwards, but get these lines of light colour in first. I think we'll make this one overall uh, colour and then gradually start to make our lighter blues. Let's start off with a fairly purpley blue. How light is it? Take a little bit of purple, a little bit of ultramarine, just test it. Yeah, that's not far off for a part of it there. So a little bit of a little more purple, a little bit more uh, Yellow ochre, to give me something more golden yellow colour down here. That light changes across the water. At the moment I'm just painting horizontal strokes, but I will want to come back into this with uh, more vertical to get the feeling of more depth in a minute. Alright, so now we'll just start to blend that a bit downwards. I want to get the depth of the water first, the reflections first, and then we'll go for the surface afterwards. So don't paint surfaces, even though they're mirrored, flat all the way across. And that just gets in some of these areas of more purple first. So just plug it into the canvas. Let's get rid of that white canvas for the moment. Um, you can't see wood for trees. Right. Now some cobalt blue and some white. Let's put the canvas down here. Take that same colour and go back up into there. And that's got rid of the base white. Now I can start to do a bit more of this business of feathering the reflections in. And just to move a bit of it out. 
Now down here, it's a lot warmer, so I take a bit more of the cobalt and a little touch of ultramarine and we'll start to a bit more blue is going on. I'm going to actually add a little bit of Prussian to it with that cobalt and a wee touch of the purple just to warm it back a bit. And we'll drag that backwards and forwards through here using the tip of the brush to start to get the feeling of ripples going on. I'm going to have to use a smaller brush for this in a minute but just to get me started. shape back here amongst this as well. In here. Also that comes out on this side. Now we can use our fingers as well with this amanda to smooth things in, to blend, to get the softer effects. I'm not stuck with just a brush and there are various brushes for doing various jobs too. If I use my fingers, look at the soft effect I can get when I want to blend these horizontal marks in. There's very soft ripples, ever so gentle ripples, right through. There we go. Now, I used to look at this background, so I'll take a, a small brush again, down to my small velvet. Brushes don't last that long doing this sort of job. And it wants to be a slight purple tint, first of all, a distant movie purple. Quite dark. So we'll take some uh, Prussian blue and a little bit of mauve. And just feel this far edge. Yeah, it is. It's as dark as that. And we'll form these distant trees. Darker into those still. A bit more Prussian blue and a touch of brown. Just feel one or two of the dark areas in here. But it's still very distant, so we still want to keep it cool. Now we need the warmer band to get rid of that bit of white of marsh just coming in before that. So I'll take some yellow ochre, a little bit of burnt sienna, a touch of burnt umber. Now whilst we've got that on the brush, there are areas of that colour that are coming into those trees as well. So we shall just tickle in the trees, little areas of the same colour to get this marsh coming into these sand dunes and trees in the background. I would say at the moment I've been going almost entirely along with horizontal marks, but we shall need to start to look from now on at doing a lot more vertical ones as well. I'm afraid it just does take time. There's no real fast way about doing this because you can't just get a sponge and sponge bits on. We have to look at all these little marks and try and make sure that none of the marks I do are ever the same, but they're always slightly different. point of the brush I'm using the pointed stick end of the brush to put in these very very tiny dots. The tool suits you for the job you need to do. All these little girls gleaming in the background here in the sunlight. 
And again we've got to the stage where it's just about there, too much detail. 